It's another Decades Artist Spotlight. It's Joey Kramer, and tonight I am very thrilled to have with us singer, actress, model, selling over 30 million albums worldwide. We are with Samantha Fox. Samantha, how you doing? I'm fine, Joe. How are you? So what are you up to? I mean, I hear you're coming back to the States. I am indeed. Yeah, I've just spent... I was at Chiller last year, the Chiller Convention, and it was so successful, I'm going to come back this year. But um, I was really only coming back this year to, to work with Full Force, um, the group who gave me my hits, um, Naughty Girls and I Want to Have Some Fun, right. back in 89 and 90. And they worked on a couple of my albums. And um, I'm work- they knew I was working on a new album this year, and they got in touch, and I was like, oh, my God, it's Lou, Bowlegged Lou's on the phone. <laughs> he said he's, he's got a hit for me. And um, he said, do you fancy making remaking some magic and I went definitely so we organized some dates to come over to Brooklyn and then I had such a good time at Chiller Theatre last year at the expo because it's my first time I'd ever done one so I'm going to do that while I'm there at the same time as well and also finish off the album so it's going to be a really good two or three weeks that I'm there you sound like you have a busy uh, upcoming year ahead of you what's left of this year and next year um, well, most of this year I've been recording the album and, and also I had the reissues released last year, which were all my albums um, put onto CD. Well, they were now double CDs with remastered tracks, B-sides, tracks that never really got on the albums in the first place. So I was promoting them most of the beginning of the year and then that took me to doing loads and loads of festivals all around the world. I did about... 150 shows this year. Wow. Celebrating, you know, my 28 year or 27 years in the music business. Can you believe it's been that long? Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I know. I mean, this is my 10th album. I'm, I'm just so excited about it. It's unbelievable. It's unreal. It goes by so quick. It does. I mean, and the last two albums I released didn't get released in the States. So that's why I haven't performed in the States since the mid 90s. And so. By doing that expo last year gave me great insight that the, the Americans, the good old Americans, hadn't forgotten who I was. No, we have and not. We Believe me, we haven't you. forgotten. Oh, thanks so much. And, you know, and but it was quite an emotional time because the first day I arrived at the expo, I was, I've got to say, I was very worried, thinking, wow, I've not been to the States for a long time. And I, I do get a lot of fan mail from the States still, and a lot of my... Facebook members are American, and my tweet hearts, which I call them, are the Americans. But, you know, America's a big, big place. Right. And, um, you know, in New Jersey, I'm thinking, oh, I hope people turn up. You know, you know that worry that you have. Oh, yeah. And pe- people have re- forgotten you. And so on the Friday, I arrived, and I was all dressed, and I went to my little table to start signing. And then I looked, and there was this queue going from my desk right out towards the entrance of the hotel, well, I'd, I've got to say, it made me cry. <laughs> it was so emotional. I was like, I can't believe this has happened. It's amazing. And then everybody just kept saying to me, please come back next year, please come back next year. And so I am. <laughs> you know, let's. I want to talk a little bit about you too, because people don't realize it's been a, you had a, a very long career and it started when you were, you were what, five years old? And you started in theater. You didn't start, you know, right away with the music. You were actually starting on, on the stage. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, at five, I started at um, a stage school. And, um, well, my mum and dad kind of noticed when I was five the kind of child I was um, at school. Whenever there was an activity play or a play, I would always get the lead or the, the, the biggest singing part. And um, if there was, there was a, like um, a fancy dress competition or a singing competition in our local town hall, I would always, even at five, I would go with my mates and just go around the corner and sing in it. So, yeah, I was a frustrated star from a very young age. And mum and dad said, I think the best thing, obviously, keeps uh, Sam's got to carry on with her education, but she needs an outlet, you know. She, she loves to sing. She loves to act. So, yeah, I started to go to a stage school, which was after school three nights a week and then on the weekends. And then at 11, when I went to my secondary school, which we call it here, right, we moved it, We moved from that area and there was another stage school run by Judy Dench, who's a very famous English actress. 
And um, she took me on for about five years, which is wonderful. So, yeah, I uh, trod, what they say, they, I trod the board. <laughs> you were 14, you had a band called SFX, is that the way you That's pronounce it? That's right. And, did, yeah. I mean, tell us about that. My first band at 14 was a school band. I was the lead singer. We had a drummer, bass, guitar, drums, and we used to play in all the schools. Whenever schools had, like, half term or the end of a holiday, or if a holiday was coming up and we had a school party, we would play in all the schools in those areas. And then when um, I left school, um, I, got to, I got a band together called SFX. Right. It was very, um, the keyboard player was from, I used to play of orchestra maneuvers in the dark. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Um, the, saxof the saxophonist we had, he used to play in a lot of big bands. Um, yeah, they were all really good session musicians that I put together, basically, because um, I really just wanted a band, and the, everybody said the quickest way to get a band together is to put ads in in all the local newspapers, and so I held auditions and found a really fantastic band, and we released two songs when I was, like, I think 16. Right. Yeah, 16. Um, and then I started to... Then I, then I became a model for three yeah, that, years. I was going to say, that's what you were... You know, you first made your break here in America, I know, and my wife said, don't mention this to her because you're going to offend her, but there wasn't, a, there wasn't one of my friends that didn't have a poster of Samantha Fox hanging on their on their bedroom uh, wall. <laughs> she said, don't mention that to her. You're going to offend her if you say that. But no, it doesn't offend me. It's the truth. I, I mean, Everybody uh, had a Samantha Fox poster back in the 80s. Of course not. I mean, I have no regrets about my life. And I look back at my modeling days very fond fondly, and they're beautiful pictures. And I think to myself, yeah, if I helped a lot of young boys grow up out there. Yeah, and, that's, that's the it, word. <laughs> well, then, and I've put a smile on their face. Well, that makes me happy. And I'm sure the ones I, I meet now on a daily basis when, when I'm doing shows and I meet my fans after, they've all grown up to be lovely young men, you know? A lot of them are married now with children and named their little girl or their boy Sam or Samantha. I actually have a daughter, Samantha. Hey, Say there, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, I'm very proud of what I've done. I mean, I, there's, there's not any pictures that I see now and I cringe. It's not like I did one glamour picture and just to get somewhere in my life i did three years i probably did three thousand of them and i did playboy so it's not like you can say after doing that oh i really regret it like a lot of pop stars do you don't regret doing any of the modeling that was going to be my next question no, but you look back all. at it fondly no and this year at chiller um last year i wasn't prepared like i should have been because it's my first time and it all people get i mean i had a a few 10 by 8s but this year I'm going to bring 10 by 8s which goes back through all my life so there will be modeling pictures there will be rock and roll pictures there will be live pictures it will be a celebration of 30 years in the business so I just hope the table's big enough for all the stuff that I'm bringing <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot out there there's no doubt so talk about that first I mean when touch me it came out I mean, it was a it was a mega hit here in America. I know. I mean, a lot of the songs on it were hits in the UK, but "Touch Me" really hit. It was number one in so many countries. It was a top ten single in a ton of countries. I mean, yeah. that kind of success overnight, becoming an international star. Right. Uh, it was like, where can I go? It was so funny. I remember going on holiday after "Touch Me" was a hit, going to Spain on holiday, where normally I would go with my family every year for like a week here. A week there, we, we we spend a lot of time in Italy or Spain, and if we just wanted a quick week's holiday, and I remember going on the beach in my bikini, and and suddenly the whole beach running up to me asking for autographs, <laughs> and I, I thought, oh my god, my life has changed. You couldn't go anywhere. And you had to wear sunglasses everywhere you went. It, exactly, or not go to those sort of. I mean, yeah, there was just paparazzi. I remember lying by the swimming pool walking along the beach and there'd just be paparazzi everywhere and I was well don't complain don't complain Sam because the day they don't want to take your picture anymore is the day that you worry and this is what I've dreamed of all my life and I'm just going to enjoy it and I'm still enjoying it 30 years later and it was a great pop album I mean besides touch me I mean I'm all you need was I mean that's a song I've played on my show before do you do you want to please me that was another big yeah. song on the on the albums it was a great pop album it really was 
Oh, it really was. I mean, it was very difficult to, to follow it up, really, and it was it was down to full force writing me that fantastic tune, Naughty Girls Need Love Too, which really helped the second album, because I did work with Scott Aiken and Waltman on the second album, who was huge in Europe right. and Asia. And uh, obviously they wanted success in America, and we, we, we released um, Nothing's Gonna Stop Me Now and I Only Want to Be With You, I think they got into, like, the 20s, but they just didn't have that impact that Naughty Girls, I Want to Have Some Fun, Touch Me had, because that sound, it was just so Euro-pop. America weren't really ready for that sound at that time. Um, And it's amazing, because after you put that out, Stock Aiken and Waterman, they started to break through in the States. They started doing Rick Astley. Exactly, and Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue, and then it opened the door for them. So they really had... I'll tell him next time I see him. I say, "Are oh, you?" <laughs> you are- <laughs> it's fun- funny enough, I was working with Rick Astley this summer in one of the festivals, and we were talking about the states. And when we first met, we did an interview together on TV in the states. And I remember because he 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 used to be really really shy in the eighties, and when I saw him recently on stage, he was like a different person. And I said, "Rick, what's happened?" He said, "Oh, you know, he's got an northern accent." He said. We all grow up. It was all a bit scary at first, wasn't it? And I said to him, no, I loved it. I was on that roller coaster, mate. I didn't want to get off, and I'm still on it now. (laughs) And, I mean, so you loved the success. You thought it was fantastic. Because a lot of people look back, and a lot of people I talk to look back, and they're, you know, they would do so many things different. Is there anything different you would have done? Um, probably, Probably some... Certain contracts that I signed, I shouldn't have signed. Yeah, probably, that's what they all say. Without a lawyer looking at them first. But that was right at the beginning of my career, and that's all sorted now. But um, maybe a couple of boyfriends I might not have chosen. <laughs> 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 um, other than that, not really. I mean, I've travelled the world. Um, um, I've done movies. I've, I've done music. Um, I've done TV presenting. Um, I do loads of charity work. I've got a really great life, you know, and um, I thank God for that every day. And you did a cover of that. I going back to that album, the cover of the Stone song, you know, Satisfaction. Yeah. I play that, and people are always ask me, who is that singing on that song? Yeah. And they don't realize you made a cover of Satisfaction, which is another great song. I mean, that album was filled with great songs, not just, you know, Naughty Girls. No, it was great, and I remember at that time, Satisfaction, I was um, touring, and I was, I think I was on the road for about six months, and um, when I heard it, I heard it by the Stones, I've heard it by the Stones millions of times, I love it, and I love the Rolling Stones, and um, I said uh, said to my manager, do you know, I'm going to cover this song, I said, because I can't remember the last time I got any Satisfaction, <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the road for six months, this is hard work. And, um, yeah, I was missing my boyfriend at the time. It was, it was very hard to maintain a relationship at that time because the lyrics were so like, when I'm flying around the world and I'm doing this and I'm signing that, you know, and it just seemed, oh, this song's for me. <laughs> yeah. Now, Full Force got back together again. He had another big hit in the States, but I want to have some fun. Most definitely. I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving on Friday to come to the States, and I'm going to be working in... Yeah, I'm going to be staying in Brooklyn and working with Full Force again. I've just done a track for their album, which is like a duet, and that's going to be released by Sony Legacy, and some of the um, don't, uh, the monies... I think a lot of the monies from that album will be going to the Paul Anthony Cancer Trust because um, he's just got over having a bone marrow cancer. So basically, it's called Four Fools and Friends, and all the people they've worked with in their career, we've all done a, a, a track on their on their album. So I've just done that. I did that in England, and they're re, they're mixing it now. And then next Friday, I fly over to the states, and I'm going to be working on two to three new songs with Four Fools for the new album. And when does that all come out? When does the Full Force album come out? Is there any date on that? The Full Force album, I've really. I really don't know, but I, I do know they really rushed me to do it, and that was about two months ago. So I reckon now it's just all getting mixed. But, see, it's a big decision at the moment whether to release before Christmas or after Christmas. It's right. a really weird time at the moment. 
but I'm sure I'll know more when I see Bowlegged Lou next week. I always love that name, Bowlegged Lou. <laughs> oh, I know. It's hilarious. But the track that um, I've done with them for their album is just amazing. If any, if the two tracks I'm going to be recording, I've heard half of one, haven't heard the other one yet. But if they're anything like the one I've done for their album, I'm so happy. I think people will be very, very happy and very surprised. They will love them. I mean, let's. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about before. I want to talk about your new album, obviously, in, in a few minutes here. But talking about the stuff you released through the '90s. I mean, you had "I Want to Have Some Fun" and "Love House" were both, you know, decent sized hits here in the states as well as yeah. in uh, the UK. See, "Love House" was before its time as well. But it was a big you club think... song. I remember playing that in the club. It was a huge yeah. club song. I mean, that DJ Pierre remix, the pyramid pyramid mix. It was huge around the world. Um, it, but I think I was probably one of the. Uh, one of the early big house tracks put out there, to be honest. And it was like, it was it was new and fresh. Um, and it was bigger in, bigger in Europe and far, the Far East, because it has that kind of Eastern sound as well to it, didn't it? Um, plus that house. So the house was just huge in Europe at that time. Right. But again, I was a little bit early, early for that in America too, like we started taking a walk and stuff, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'll re-release it. <laughs> you know what? If you re-released it now, it would probably do. It's that's the kind of music that's still popular in the clubs today, twenty years later. I know, and like when I'm doing all my live live shows this year, a love house. It still goes down a real treat. It, it's it's just a catchy little number. It's it's just great. I love it. It goes down really well live. And talk about some of these albums through you know through the '90s. Just one night, 21st Century Fox. I mean, obviously, they didn't do as well as your first three albums. Do you yeah. ever? Was it the change in music? Was it? What was the? What do you think the reason was? Well, I know for a fact that you know I signed a five album deal, and the last album, which was just one night, um, I was with Jive Records, who uh, were quite a small independent label at that time, who had um, connections with in in those days it was RCA, BMG. And they had a five-year contract um, for RCA, BMG, distributing my music around the world because it was a small label in England, yeah? They had offices in New York, but not big. So the contract, just as Just One Night was released, we did a video called Hurt Me, Hurt Me, The Pants Stay On. It was the most expensive video I'd ever made. I think it cost me nearly, uh, near enough, a co- in those days... Yeah, near enough a quarter of a million dollars. Right. And it was a two, two, three-day shoot, and the album was released. It got no publicity, no promotion, because the contract with Jive and BMG had run out, and they didn't renew it, and it took them about two years to argue over um, small print. So my little album, just one night, just sort of went out there. Nobody knew about it, and it didn't get promoted, and it just... It was the most expensive album I ever made, most expensive videos I ever made, just one night, hurt me, hurt me. But it just didn't get the push that it deserved and the promotion. I hear that so much with, with uh, artists that are in the tail end of their um, record contract, that yeah. their last album just doesn't get the... Pr- it's like you make it, you put all this work into it, and then they just stick it on the shelf and that's it. Yeah, it, it was a real shame. And uh, But some of those tracks on just one night are fantastic. I mean, I worked with people like Cavillis and Cole. They were so hot at the time. Full force, you know. Um, I don't know, people who were just so hot at the time and who were very expensive. Right. Because, you know, you, you, you always, each album that you do, you want to better yourself. You want to make it better. You, because it's so hard. When you've had a first album, which has been number one in, like, 18 countries and top 10 the rest of the world, it's so hard to follow up something like that. So... You look for different producers, you you know, you look for songs and you take more time because you want to better yourself as an artist, you know. Um, so when that kind of thing happens, when the record companies have got something political going on with their distributors and it affects the artist, it's a terrible shame. So when that contract ran out, I decided to go it alone and um, I set up my own label uh, Fox Records, Foxy Records. Um, I've released um, the last two albums on my own label. But this new album, um, 
I would like a worldwide label because with the downloading now, if you don't have, um, uh, let's say, what they call it, a simultaneous release where it's released the whole, the whole world straight away, because what used to happen used to release in Europe first, then right. America, or America, then Europe. But because of all the downloading now, you know, people sharing, you have to release at the same time worldwide. Otherwise, artists just we don't sell any records because they'll download it in Europe and send it, and if, send it, it to all their friends in America. It's in the states <laughs> before you even know it. I really want to. I want to sign with a major label this time because I need I need the album to come out all over the world at, at the same time. If I try to do independent deals, it, you know, you'll be, Germany will be releasing in like March, and France might decide to release in June, and America might decide to release in September, and by then everybody's downloaded the album and got it anyway. <laughs> You know, it's a double-edged sword, the Internet, because you look at some of the stuff, the people that have started their careers, and people don't, I mean, it's easier. You see some of these songs on YouTube, they get the hits. There's this one song that my kids were showing me. It's called, What Does the Fox Say? Oh, I know. They've been <laughs> ringing me. The Norwegian band, they've been ringing about it. It gets in your head. They keep saying to me, what does the fox say? And I went, mean, I don't know. What does the fox say? It's ironic <laughs> saying that to you, but is what does the fox Have you heard the song? Yes, I have, because... Oh. Um, I'm very famous in Norway. I've actually I've done about eight shows there this year, and and I, and I won a cooking program there this year. And um, this this song came out, so all the newspapers from Norway were ringing me, ringing the office, asking for interviews about this song. So I, I, I had to go on YouTube and have a look, and I had, I saw they went on the Helen DeGeneres show and everything, and it had 40 million hits on YouTube, and I'm like, well. I guess I'll talk about it, but I really don't know what the fox says. But um, uh, I, have, but I know that my little nephew, he, he, I think kids love it. Let's face it; it's a little bit like that Gangland style yeah. record, isn't it? You know, it's one of those records that come around, and all the kids love it. They all do the silly little dance. It has 110 million hits on YouTube right now. Oh my God! See, I spoke to. The newspaper two weeks ago, and it was 40 million hits. Yeah, 110 million. It's amazing for a song like, and it gets stuck in your head, and then you can't. I'm walking around the day singing, What does the fox say in my head all day? I know. <laughs> See what makes me laugh? It goes, The cow goes moo. <laughs> the kid, was it the duck goes quack? The fish <laughs> goes flub. It's, it's crazy. It's fun. It's fun. There's yeah. two comedians, apparently. Now, you said you did TV. So what was your, you know, you did some TV and film, too. That that starting the uh, you know into the how could you say it the two thousands or were you doing that right along? Yeah, um, a lot. Yeah, don't get me mixed up with the other Samantha Fox in America, will you? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> I remember when I first released Touch Me, people thought it was her, and I was like, oh no, no, it's not. It's Isn't not she me. the the porn star of the town of America? Yeah, yeah no. Everyone <laughs> saying change your name to me when I first broke America, and I went. This is my name. I was born Samantha Fox. No, you did some reality television and stuff, like you were saying. You did the yeah. yeah not I, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess you up with that Samantha Fox. Oh no, no, the reality show I did was because I really love it. Like, I watch it every year. It's called I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. Right. And um, it's funny. I, mean, I remember seeing Janice Dickinson on it. She's American, isn't she? That American supermodel. Yes. She was hilarious. They just kept making her do everything. You have to eat. You have to eat the most, like, um, cockroaches. You, you have to put your hand in these holes where there's snakes to try and get stars to win food. It's a survival program, and you do take away something from it. You, you realize after three weeks there how lucky you really are, you know, and what you take for granted in life. And Plus, I'm a bit of a tomboy, and... I love nature. I love the whole aspect of living outdoors and campfires and nature and stuff like that. So, yeah, when I got asked to do it, I jumped at the chance. It was, yeah, I loved it. And it gets seen by, I don't know what the audience is like in America on it, but in England it's pretty much 12 million oh, a, yeah, a night for three weeks. It's, a big, it's a big show in America, it is. Yeah, it's a really big show. And, and you kind of take something away with you from that. Whereas I get offered Big Brother, 
where everyone just sits in a house gossiping for three weeks and it's quite <laughs> controversial and everyone's seeing your cornflakes around your teeth in the morning right. and washing and bathing and to me that's really personal. Um, but there's certain reality shows that I love, you know, like the survival programs, things like that. So tell us about, I want to get to this new album. Tell us what's, what do we look forward to on this new CD you have coming out? It's going to be a very foxy album. I mean, it's going to be party, party time. It's, it's got, um, it's, it's, I would say, um, it's pumping. That's the word. It's do, pumping. Do you have a name for it yet? Not yet, no. Um, there is one track that I wrote, and it's called The Secret. Um, and there's another track that I've recorded called Forever. I think I may call it Forever because I believe this is still not the end and I believe there's more to come. So I'd like to call the album maybe Forever. Uh, do you know what? I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> I might do a competition. Get all the, I've got about another four tracks to finish. I've got to finish off the tracks with Full Force. And when I'm done them, we're going to look at all the titles, see what jumps out at us. But at the moment, forever kind of come. Yes, I like forever because I feel it's not over for me yet. I feel I've still got so much more to give. Is there any plans of releasing a single before you release the actual album? I know before you said you wanted to kind of release everything at once, but is there any chance of releasing a single before the actual album oh, comes yeah. out? Oh yeah, I'll definitely release a single first, and then the album as a whole. Yes. And you said Samantha Fox is not done. So you, you, you fully anticipate making more music, obviously. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I've got my own record label and production company now. So if I'm not going to be... Rec I mean, I'll record this album and then I'll be starting on the next one as soon as. But I'm also writing for a lot of our other acts at the moment and co-producing albums as well. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a teenager anymore. I have to think about my future. And I love music, and there's so many young, talented stars out there that, and I write songs all the time, and I'm sure there's songs that I've written for, for young bands out there, young singers, and that's what I'd like to be doing in the future, is writing and producing for up-and-coming singers, bands, stuff like that. Do you ever say, I just need a year off? <laughs> do you want to sit home and do nothing? <laughs> no, do you know, I could never sit and do nothing. Yeah, I know. I, I go, oh. I, I'm the same way. The other, the other week, I'd hurt my back. I was performing somewhere, and I jumped off the, the drum riser because I'm, I'm, you know, I like to be a bit crazy on stage. And I didn't realise it was as high as, I, <laughs> as high as I thought it was. <laughs> and I've jumped, and I've first of all, I've twisted my ankle. That hurt bad enough. And then the next day, I could hardly walk. It wasn't my foot; it was my lower back. I don't even want to talk about my back. What, what was he talking about that now? <laughs> it's it's amazing how much things hurt even more now than they did 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that. And you think, you think you're still a teenager. You run around crazy. But I do keep fit, do loads of exercises. I run about 5K every day. Um, I look after myself, my, you know, nutrition, stuff. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, because of jumping off these stages and hurting your ankles, hurting your back. I don't think at 60, can I see myself singing Naughty Girls guess. Need Love too? <laughs> I don't know. You never but know. I'm looking, I really don't know. Or touch me, touch me. I want to feel your body when I'm 60. I yeah, don't we, know. I was saying, could you picture being 75, 76 years old and feel Anna uh, singing Touch Me out there? <laughs> oh, I think they'd all run away. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm thinking about the future. I'm writing songs for other people, too. That's like, I think, that's my pension. And I mean, then again, you've got Cher at the moment. It's just come out of a new album and a tour. I know, and you wouldn't think anything. I mean, Cher, I mean, how old she is, and she still looks good. Yeah, she's, she sounds good. She was on TV last night in Great Britain, and she sang live on The X Factor, and she was she sounded and looked great. She was brilliant. And I said, I said to my mum, I said... You know, she's the kind of woman who, you know, makes you feel good about yourself. Gosh, she's still doing it at that age. Like people like Tina Turner. Yeah, Tina Turner, 70, you know? 73 years old, and she's she looks the same I as she did 20 years ago. probably just have to change a few titles that's of the all. songs. That's, that's all you have to do. <laughs> 
We're on the Decades Artist Spotlight. We are here with Samantha Fox tonight. Samantha, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to uh, hearing some new music from you in the future. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, thanks, Joe. We'll talk again near when the album's done, and I can maybe play you some bits and pieces. You, you got it. Thanks, Samantha. Hi, my name's Samantha Fox, and you are listening to Decades with Joey Kramer. Ooh, touch me, Joey.